All right, guys, and welcome to episode 112 of the Impact Defense Podcast. Uh, Today we have two guests on here, uh, both very regular guests, our first and second most frequent guests on the same podcast again. I'm pretty sure you guys have been on podcasts before, Mm -hmm. right? Just just a couple times. A couple times? Once once or twice. Okay. At least least three. Okay. So we have Gentry and we have Steven. Let's get right into it. Okay, so in this episode, I'm going to be completely honest and upfront. We have discussed this before in the past, and we have some lost episodes, most of which we have just let die. This is one we said we're going to come back and do. When we get a chance to have both of you on again, we're going to come back and do. Because Gentry had a really good question in one of them, and we're talking about books and what we can learn from books for self-defense. We're going to get into that not quite yet, though. We need to remember partner of the podcast, the official fuel of the podcast, if they're listening to the podcast, they can't see you hold up your cup like Vanna White there, Kylie. Blackout coffee. I, I'm pretty sure everybody has had the blackout coffee at this point by now, right? Multiple times. Multiple yes. times. Many, many times. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. <laughs> Which one did you drink? Uh, the chocolate cherry. Chocolate the- cherry, yeah. Uh-huh. The chocolate cherry was awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That one's still yet the surprising. It is. It's awesome. I like coffee. I like America. I don't like shilling for socialists and stuff like other coffee brands, uh, specifically the one with the circle mermaids and whatnot, um, or particularly overpaying for coffee that's mediocre. <laughs> if you want to overpay for coffee, make sure it's good coffee. This is much right. better coffee, and you get to keep your principles. <laughs> All right, so you guys head over to impactgear.live slash coffee. Make sure you use the coupon code impact defense to get you 10% off. I'm not 100% sure if Blackout Coffee condones my shade throwing, but... I'm sure they probably... I don't know. I was going to say I'm sure they probably don't, but, you know... I don't know, but if any of the Starbucks CEOs want to meet up here and throw hands, I'm down. <laughs> All right, so the last time we had Steven on, we decided... Because he kept... He would tell these stories from you know his work as a policeman before and after podcast we always got to hear every time he come in he would tell something that was like hilarious so we decided in lieu of a story when steven is here for our new story portion we're going to have steven tell something story time with steven story time with steven gotcha. and jada wants to actually get some theme music just for that one do you know what you're going to tell or are you just uh yeah yeah i've got one thought i've got a couple of them just up okay. here it's just uh cross-referencing what is really funny but it's also like appropriate Appropriate. podcast yeah yeah (laughs) Um, we're still a family friendly kind of podcast that also talks about rape murder and other things that happen in the real world so you know (laughs) yeah but i've got a good one drummed up all right here we go Uh, at one point i was moved over to days i've potentially been i've mostly been a nighttime officer uh they pretty much always put me when the sun goes down i guess that's the where i'm least i think your face works better when the sun goes down it's much like my face it's always better you know when you can't see it i think it's like a a personality thing where it's like you know i'm the least likely to encounter like normal people (laughs) and uh, the normal people are the ones that complain because i say things well like everything i say um (laughs) so they're like hey he gets complained less when it's dark outside and uh, when it's like two o'clock in the morning and the only people out are like night shifters and crackheads yeah um which are essentially just the same you know they're just (laughs) crackheads but their crack is caffeine you know it's just like hey he gets complained on less so you know we'll stick him over there and uh you know and i do do okay work so they moved me to daytimes the reason is because uh sergeant needed somebody to ride with him because he had just had uh i think he just had surgery i think he just had his gallbladder taken out and so uh, you were the sergeant's muscle exactly yeah gotcha. so he kind of pointed and i just did the police stuff so uh you know we're on patrol so i'm supposed to be riding with him but i had to go to school traffic because you know it's daytime you have to go watch kids go to school and uh when i do i pass this car well i know the car it's it's one of the local uh one of the local frequent flyers i know he doesn't have a license and i'm like well this is is way better than watching kids go to school so i turn around on him i pull him over in the parking lot of a bank i've got my blue lights on and i'm behind him mm-hmm. like I, I'm, I'm watching him do this he pulls into a parking spot gets out of the driver's seat walks around the car gets in the back seat and has the passenger move over i watched it the whole time <laughs> Like it's just really like he's getting one over on me, and it, it doesn't it doesn't work like that. And uh, so I walk up, and I'm like, "Do you really think that I was just gonna pull the wool over my eyes? Like, like I didn't just watch you do it?" And he's like, "Oh, come on now." He's gotten 
he got a ticket and he got a warning and, and another and something else like uh, essentially some other enforcement action i think it was another ticket yeah but uh so like he's been and this driving while license revoked is an arrestable offense in north carolina and we're just tired of him doing it because it's it wouldn't be a big deal if he drove well yeah. but he, he doesn't <laughs> Like, I don't particularly care. I'm like, hey, you know, driver's license for me, I think it's kind of dumb anyway. But, like, he can't drive. Like, he's, he's terrible at it. Like, he always hits stuff or, like, he's always causing some kind of problems. Like, he's always really messed up. And I think it was kind of doped up day two. But, like, you know, we weren't really dealing with that. And I was like, all right, look. I was like, I'm tired of seeing you drive. We've been dealing with this all the time. You're always up to some kind of nefarious head rat stuff. Like, we're going to jail. That's it. You've been told too many times. Like, come on, let's go. And he's like, no. And I'm like, no, 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 we're, we're going to jail now it's just me and i've got him out of the car and he's like standing at the hood and i'm like okay so i've got my hand on him which first off is gross i didn't have gloves on he's not like you don't you don't want to touch him like he's he's one of those yeah like he's just you know, like, he kind of emits a fog whenever you're around him that I'm pretty so, sure could so get So let me just head. interject for just a moment. I, I just, I like this. Something Steven said in the very last episode that he was on was talking about medical training. And he said, you know, if it's wet and it's not yours, you shouldn't be touching it with your skin. You know, you need gloves on. Uh-huh. So that's, that's exactly where my brain went the moment mm-hmm. he said that. So go ahead. Yeah, but like, but I also thought like, oh, if I wait and I start getting my gloves out and I start putting my gloves on, he's going to be like, oh, that's an indicator we're going to fight. And <laughs> So I didn't want it to be a fight because then he would bleed and I can guarantee his blood is disgusting. <laughs> he, yeah, he just, I'm pretty sure he just exists in a sea of used needles and like he, he's, he's gross. And so I'm like, okay, so like, you know, the, I guess it's like the, the least, the, the, the lowest of all the evils was just to grab him. And so I'm like, put your hands behind your back, put your hands behind your back. And he's like, no, F you. And he's like, you know, cussing me out. About the time the sergeant rolls up who can't fight right now yeah, because he's still got stitches. <laughs> <laughs> I am just his catalyst to not have to sit in the office. Gotcha. About the time that he comes rolling around the corner, I have grabbed his arm and twisted it around and thrown him over the trunk of the car, said some expletives, essentially uh, coming to, you are going to put your hands behind your back and you are going to go to jail and you can shut up. <laughs> but, you know, with, with what would be a lot of editing if I was going to quote it verbatim here. Gotcha. Right? Gotcha. But so anyway, about the time that the guy who's not supposed to be fighting pulls up into the parking lot, I have slammed somebody over a trunk lid and am currently essentially chewing them up one side and down the other. After, once you get them cuffed, you got to search them. So now I'm like pulling weird like stuff. Dudes that do meth always have all kinds of weird stuff. For whatever reason, flashlights is one of them and like small (laughs) knives. And they've always got like some kind of like belt mounted pouch that's just full of tissues and like just whatever weird stuff they find on the ground. Batteries. They love batteries. And I (laughs) like even the non-alkaline ones because you know, you can take the alkaline ones, you can pull the strips out and you can put them in your Gatorade bottle with your Sudafed and your Drano and shake it up and you can make hillbilly crystal candy. Andy, you know, it wasn't that. And I'm like, something new every day, you know, so I'm like pulling all this crap out of this dude's pockets and it's just handfuls of garbage. Like, and I'm like, I don't, you know, and so like, I'm mad anyway. Are you doing this barehanded at this point in time? Oh no, no, no. I put gloves on. Okay. okay. Yeah. No, no. It's cool. like, that's uh, yeah. It's a stick hazard. Um, yeah. That's what I was wondering. So like, you know, and I'm like, and I like, I always feel the pocket itself and make sure mm. there's nothing like needle shaped in there. Or, like I don't feel any like broken glass or anything. And so I'm like, pulling all his pockets out and like he's cussing me out and i'm cussing about meth heads in general and i'm like why do you always carry so much damn blah, blah, blah? you know and i'm just on and on and on and like the sergeant's over there and now the guy that he had the passenger seat that he was they were going to court that's why he was driving and the guy he had in the passenger seat also had to go to court for the record i made sure he got to court safely they took him to court at the jail but <laughs> Now, the guy he had in the passenger seat was probably like probably a quarter of a gram away from an overdose. He is so high. He's probably the highest I've ever seen anyone. And he's nodding out and like just you're really going to make him drive. Like that was your that was your big thing was just get Fenton McGee over here to drive you all to court and he's like oh man blah, blah, blah. you know so anyway so i put him in the car and so i'm like well you know now i gotta tow the car because I, I can't have the meth wagon just sitting here in the bank parking lot it's a bad look it's bad for business so you know i call the tow truck driver and my friend the tow truck driver comes down now he's the same guy that towed his car just a couple weeks earlier so now he's mad because the same tow truck driver came down here who just happened to be right down the road so he was there lickety split it's probably the fastest i've ever had a tow truck driver get there but uh so he's there lickety split and so like now the fentanyl ferret that 
I've got arrested is cussing me out and he's cussing him out and like, you know, and he's just, he's going nuts. And uh, so I put him in the back of my car. Now it's a small Ford Taurus is what I was driving at the time, right? <laughs> like it's a Ford Taurus with a full cage in the back. And this guy is like six foot three. I'm like, okay. you know, like 120 pounds, like a, a methy six foot yeah, three. Okay. Okay. You know what I mean? And uh, so I've got him in the back of my car and somehow he gets his knee up by his head and is kicking the back glass of the car like and like he's kicking the cage and so you know now i've got him and i'm like ah so i you know open the door and i push his head down between his legs like he was gonna pass out and i'm yelling at him and i'm like if you don't quit doing that like you know i'm gonna i don't remember what i said and uh, the tow truck driver's looking at me like "Ooh, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> And he's like, yeah. and so he's egging me on, and I'm like, he's in handcuffs. I can't punch him. Like, <laughs> and he was like, I was really hoping you were going to do it. I thought you were just going to slam his face into that thing. And I was like, well, I mean, like, you know, I did kind of mush his face into the glass. And he's like, well, I'm not stopping next time. Next time it's going to be a high speed chase. And I went, that's a 1988 Chrysler Fifth Avenue. It doesn't go high speed, stupid. And I slammed the door. <laughs> right? You know, we go to jail. I take him to the magistrate's office. I charge him with driving while license revoked and uh, disorderly conduct, right? So we're heading to the jail. Now, I've just, I've dealt with him. You know, I had to drive him all the way to the jail. It's like 15 minutes. Took the charges out on him. We're getting to the Sally Port of the jail. And he's like, man, you don't want none of me. You don't want none of me. I'm a beast. And I'm like, I can't tell you how many times I've been there because your girlfriend beat you up. I was like, it's a lot. I'm like, dude, I, like, I'm at least three times. And I was like, girls beat you up i've seen it happen i took her to jail for beating you up in front of me one time he quit talking to me after that i don't know if you can believe it but he quit talking to me after that he was, he was kind of weird about it I'm, I'm not really shocked that you can kind of out talk someone yeah it doesn't shock me at all actually yeah well the best part about it was i get woken up about three weeks later right uh yeah my office manager calls me and she's like hey they need you in court right now and i'm like no <laughs> <laughs> like they're just gonna have to have court without me that's okay and they're like no no no. they need you in court right now or they're gonna try that you know that guy and i'm like okay i was like well what do they need me there for i sent them a copy of my report i'm just gonna sit on the stand and read it and they're like oh no he's representing himself and i was like well, i'm not missing that for the world <laughs> His defense for the whole thing was his girlfriend was in jail and he was sad. <laughs> but he came up and he apologized to me afterwards and he was like, I'm sorry, I just wasn't in a good place. And I was like, well, to be That's honest why with you. I brought you to jail. Yeah, like, to be honest with you, Adam, if you had tried anything more than what you did, you would have been in a worse place. <laughs> it's a good time. That's my story. <laughs> That was definitely an interesting news story, Stephen. Thank you. You're very welcome. Very enjoyable. <laughs> I don't think it quite made it to the headlines, but... <laughs> so let's go ahead and move on to our main topic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. What would you say if someone said that they could learn all they needed to about self-defense from a book? Because we've talked about training in person. We've talked about all kinds of different things, different ways to train. Can you learn self-defense from a book? If so, what books do you recommend? And what kind of things would you take from those books? You can definitely learn. Uh, it cannot self-defense, but you can definitely learn concepts. I don't know. There's like the Tao of Jeet Kune Do by Bruce Lee. I oh, mean, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, if you want to learn how to not fight that's cool but uh <laughs> i uh, take it from the guy who was almost never in a fight for for basically an unproven martial art that was never proven <laughs> oh dude you're gonna piss off a bunch of people <laughs> i mean you know uh, like that's not saying he wasn't a great martial artist he, he was and i mean you know he had a lot of really good concepts and stuff like that but he had like one competitive fight that was ever I, recorded and then I'm, I'm aware of this and i know this and that's why i try not to get into that discussion too much yeah, like, but man if you say that you piss some people off i mean he's yeah you know people I, I hear all too often people go like you know oh man bruce lee would just like kick anybody's tail in the ufc right now I was like, bruce lee was five foot two and 125 pounds um <clears throat> probably not bruce lee would be in the featherweight division <laughs> So anyway, um, not, not we'll edit that part out, I reckon, but you know, it's, I, I don't know. We might just leave the controversy in. Yeah. I like controversy, but as far as it goes, <laughs> we never you know, would have guessed. Yeah. I, I love it. I, I live for it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, you know, people can have their own opinions on it, but the fact of the matter is, is it was genuinely just like unproven. He had one professional fight and he did well in that, but you know, 
and say like, well, it worked because I tried it one time. And it's like, well, that's not, that's still a hypothesis. It's can, not. Can we do a podcast at some point where Stephen can only say positive things about whatever is brought up? It, I would speak the littlest amount. Oh, no, you have to say something positive about everything. <laughs> that, that could be a very entertaining podcast. It really could. Yeah, right. So, like, what do you think about like, communism? Well, you know, nobody's <laughs> killed more commies than commies. So. <laughs> I'm thinking this might be an, uh, an an episode at some point. Yes. Okay. But no, 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 I'll see you. no, I do. I have heard people, and I mean every style, every type of martial. There's there's books on boxing. There's books on jiu jitsu. There's books on uh, karate. There's books on kickboxing. There's books on all of this stuff. There's books on Krav Maga. Right. I I think it's hard to learn physical skills from books unless you have a extremely extremely good base. Yeah. Then you can pick up a couple things from books, but you're not going to like, I mean, you're, you're not going to learn from scratch fighting right. skills from books. Unless, yeah, unless you just have something that you can base it off of. I mean, there's definitely a lot. I mean, you know, um, there's a lot of people, especially in the really early days of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, that were watching Gracie tapes and stuff like that. And yeah, they were practicing. That's how I got my start people. grappling. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, but they had somebody to train with and they were putting these things into practice. And, you know, so they were able to get a base. And, and yeah. you know, for, I mean, pretty much, uh, unless somebody had like a distinct wrestling background or something like that, it, even way back in the day when it was especially just kind of getting into vogue, that was, you know, uh, a lot of stuff that was, um, that, that made people dangerous was like, you know, their ability to learn and kind of put into practice and, and, practice this stuff so basically not basically every single smoker i ever fought in and one i did it you know as far as grappling stuff off of the gracie tapes mm -hmm. you know i caught a dude in a double arm bar one time because i saw it on the internet somewhere right right but uh it's not being said that you you can't learn self-defense yeah. from books but it, it's definitely you're going to be a lot slower it's going to be a lot more trial and error if um guy that you're defending yourself against has any form of training at all in person you're probably gonna get yeah like, oh yeah that, that's what i learned once i actually started fighting with guys who like yeah knew what they were doing yeah like um hopefully it, it's not like a one of those on the street death matches because you know but i was in a school i was just you know free grappling after yeah. a jiu-jitsu class yeah like, but was, you know i learned oh those gracie tapes didn't actually take me to black belt yeah <laughs> like, you know <laughs> Like they'll, they'll take you to, oh, I'm a little bit comfortable here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he knows as much as I know, so we don't know what we don't know. And, yeah. You know, and that's another thing. You, you don't know and what you don't know. And you're not actually gaining any form of experience. You're only gaining knowledge. And knowledge of that experience is really, really one-sided. Yeah. Um, you see a lot of this with college kids. If you've ever spoken to a kid in college, it's a lot of knowledge with no experience. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they learn from books all the time, but they have no application of it. And that's why they're uh, very often so naive. Um, but the same thing could be f said for uh, self-defense. Whereas, you know, you, it's simple. You don't know what you don't know. And unless you've had somebody who's, um, you know, definitely books are, are a great form of knowledge to, to glean off, but it should be based with what's put in practice. So basically you should already have a good fundamental knowledge yeah. and experience with things before you try to learn from books for defense techniques or any kind of anything like physical right. yeah. actual when you're talking about you know punching someone grabbing someone so shooting if, something are yeah. there any books that y'all would recommend for that for like for, for physical skills for any type of protecting yourself skills whether well, it I think be a lot mental of it, or physical i think a lot of it's going to boil down to i think the vast majority of people can pick things up uh from books that focus on the mental side of staying mm -hmm. safe um, things like mindset and tactics yeah. can be built from, from book learning and most of that, you know, uh, especially fighting mindset, um, you know, exercises that you can do to make you more mentally strong, putting your head through scenarios and stuff like that, making sure that your scenarios that you're, you're thinking through are, are realistic, even in law enforcement and stuff like that during, uh, during field training process, we do verbal scenarios because i mean we don't get all the calls all the time even in huge agencies where you have you know if, if you run call to call to call to call to call all day long most of those calls are going to be piddly and dumb and you know you're going to show up and it's going to be the same thing over and over and over again you know you're mad at 10 because he called you whatever and you want him to get out of your house and you know it's that kind of stuff whereas you know you can do theoreticals and, and you can 
glean a lot of that not only off their knowledge base but also how they would theoretically handle that problem yeah um, especially if it is something significant and problematic it's a lot of stuff anything that you can use to strengthen your mindset or improve your tactics you're going to have to use less of your skills anyway mm -hmm. it's kind of the same thing like you know if you end up in that fight your tactics probably sucked um, <laughs> that's you know, true it just is what it is you know if you if you really ended up in that fight unless it was just random and you were attacked and that was you know you were sitting at home and somebody kicked in your front door and you know now you're in this fight you know okay there's not a lot you can do about that a lot of times although i would advise making you know putting up security lights and and things like this yeah you know random crackhead comes kicks in your door because he's like mm, i smell cookies whatever <laughs> uh you know now you're in a fight well you know now you have to use these skills but other than that i mean if you're if you're out and about generally any kind of fight that you're in there's some form of speech altercation that happens before then or if you were if you had your eyes up and you were looking around and you were paying attention you would have seen them before he got to you yeah and stuff like that so um i think books especially should be used to build good fighter mindset and um proper application of tactics rather than skills-based training just because i mean you know you can have a thousand repetitions of whatever techniques and stuff like that but if you don't have anybody to train with if you don't have anybody to bounce stuff off of if you don't have anybody to try anything on especially with, like, under any form of duress for their fighting back you don't really know if it's going to work so you're saying develop more of a mindset than a technique mm -hmm. okay. yeah I, I think that's probably the the strongest and best place for books Okay. this mindset and, and like you said the preparation type stuff uh things that you can do around your home you know uh you, you can learn all that kind of stuff that's kind of the stuff that we do on this podcast as mm -hmm. well we focus on mindset and things that you can do instead of physical skills it's going to be really hard to teach someone how to punch over a podcast just like mm -hmm. it would be very hard to teach someone to punch over a book right exactly exactly i mean you know it can definitely help. I mean, uh, I guess the best thing you could do is teach people to put their thumbs on the outside of their fist when they <laughs> when they punch. But, um, you know, as, as far as it goes, not really a whole lot. I mean, you know, you can teach people concepts of fighting through a book. Yeah. Uh, same way that we can learn concepts of fighting through a conversation. Yeah. You know, uh, I guess in a lot of ways, a book is just a very one-sided conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, you can learn concepts of fighting and, and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, tactics, huge strategy, that kind of thing. But, you know, I believe that your time reading books would be much better spent dealing with tactics and mindset rather than strictly skills. If you have absolutely nobody to go to in your area to learn how to throw a punch or to not suck at fighting, there's there's stuff that you can use for sure. Grab a buddy, but um, you probably also have a local high school that has a wrestling coach. Yeah. That's probably a decent place to start. So do y'all have any books specifically that you would recommend? Do we have any books? <laughs> <laughs> How do you, you want to go just like back and forth? Yeah, we can go back and okay. forth. One of them, and this is really just one of the, uh, one of the OGs. And, and it's a book that's really expensive on Amazon right now. And I don't understand why, because if you find it in a bookstore, it's generally like 10 or 15 bucks. But it's The Principles of Personal Defense by Jeff Cooper, um, the Lieutenant Colonel himself. He was the pioneer that really, well, he really pioneered modern uh, gunfighting and training. And stuff like that. Most of the training, uh, at least in the way that we have it now for civilians, was started by Jeff Cooper at Gunsight. Mm, yeah. So, um, yeah, he was really the the OG on uh, getting people trained up, uh, at least normal people. Yeah. An another thing that I, I would bring out, as I'm sure is a very popular one, would be The Gift of Fear by Gavin DeBacher. Mm -hmm. That one's a really good one. Did you did you read that one, Gentry? Yes. You did? I really enjoyed just the everything it's bringing in as stop ignoring your intuition. Yeah. I mean, yeah. your intuition's there for a reason and mm -hmm. use it. Yeah, it was it was really good. Mm -hmm. uh, the one, I guess the, you know, I don't agree with, and I'm sure I won't agree with everything that everybody right. says. You know, one right. of the things, he's not a fan of guns and right. I think they can be a very useful tool. Right. Uh, yeah. So I don't think that's necessarily, but. Right, yeah. but it is a very, very good book. <clears throat> yeah. Very informative and really uh, that's, that's one thing that I've harped on people a whole lot and especially coming into law enforcement and like the new kids and stuff coming through as you've been taught like your whole life, oh, well, don't, don't stare, don't profile people, don't yeah. make assumptions, <laughs> things like that. Like, yes, yep. do that. Yeah, like, yeah, do yeah, do, do all of those things. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know, like don't like make weird assumptions, like, <laughs> but, you know. But, you know, definitely, like, profile people. That's yeah. You do it naturally because that's what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. it is, it's a survival technique. All of, all of this, everything that we have, all of this, uh, this first world society and stuff that we live in, it's, it's an anomaly. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't exist. Like, 
uh, essentially. Yeah. Um, you know, we have we have fabricated all of this, and it can go away just as soon as as it got here. You know, I mean, if you look at, at the way things are, like Katrina and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, it, it went in three days. It went from howdy neighbor to I'm going to murder you and take your food, um, because most people only have about three days worth of food in their house. And um, if you have more food than the other guy, that guy at that point is starving. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, he, he's going to try and feed his family, and it just is what it is. If you're not trained on how to use intuition and if you're not you know, trained on these preservation skills, um, you're not going to have them when you need them. You know, also, just any other time, people get desperate randomly, and it can be on the one-on-one basis, and you can be in that altercation that you could have avoided if you, you properly used your, uh, your intuition the way that God intended you to. But um, another book, uh, a really good one by Pat McNamara. Uh, Pat McNamara is a, a really great trainer. He's um, he's a great dude. He wrote a book called Sentinel. Yeah, becoming the agent in charge of your own protection. Uh, it's a really really good book. It covers, I mean, a whole broad array of things um, from home preparedness to vehicle tactics, uh, just normal driving stuff that you really wouldn't think about a lot of times. Leaving enough room in front of the car in front of you, mm-hmm. which is a pet peeve for me, is when people absolutely tailgate somebody. Yes, me too. And uh, or if you're in a traffic jam or something like that people will sit in the middle lane and they will sit close enough to the car in front of them that they can't move to either side right um, if ever there's a traffic jam i immediately find whichever side doesn't have some form of blockage that, that i would be able to get out um, if you think about it if anybody you know wanted to start an active shooting a traffic jam is a great place uh, yeah. it's the only place you can do the only thing you can do is get out of your vehicle and run in a straight line yeah true um you know you can run out to the signs but you know i, I hope i'm not giving anybody ideas but like <laughs> as far as it goes every time i'm in a traffic jam i'm like great somebody's gonna start shooting and then i'm gonna have to start shooting because <laughs> like i don't know if any of these people are like the guy too but like i it's a whole really awkward thing i'm about to be like no stop i'm the police don't shoot at me stop <laughs> it you know hey well, that's uh, where your vest comes in it's true yeah. yeah you know i wear a reflective one actually i've got i've got a ballistic vest in, in the car too yeah i've uh, got a lot of crap in my car <laughs> you know i believe it i've not read that one that's one i want to i'd like yeah. to look at i've read other books by him but mm-hmm. I haven't read that one. To to include, I mean, it's it's a really good catch all book, especially it deals with um, you know, personal protection, protection for your family, teaching kids, you know, how, how to be more observant and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, he was talking about when he was raising his kids, he raised them and they would play a game and be like, oh, okay, I want you to pay attention when we're in the store and where when we come back out, I'm going to ask you questions. If you get them right, I'll give you money or whatever. Oh. So like, you know, I'll give you a dollar for every question I ask you, and it'll be stuff like, what's the? Uh, Don't get any ideas, Kelly. Yeah, like the cashier. What was the cashier's name? If you can, if you were observant enough to see that, pay attention to it. Remember it when we get back into the car. That's you know, a really neat idea. Though. That kind of thing. Um, you I know, really like that. Yeah, like you know, did you see whoever that was sitting on the corner? What color were their shoes? And it's stuff like that. You know, stuff that just teaches them to be more observant. So you know, not only being your own personal protection, but kind of setting your kids up to be more observant, so they're li- less likely That's to awesome. become victims. What was the name of that one? Uh, sitting on by Pac McNamara. Okay. Uh, so another one that kind of goes back to that intuition thing is the new superpower for women. That one I ask really, uh, that is by Steve Cardian and Clara Pistic. I always mess up her name. I don't know exactly how she says her name, so I'm sure I've screwed it up. But it's all about, you know, again, trusting intuition, intuition and uh, it really kind of geared toward women. But I even you know, kind of like the gift of fear, I still found a lot of it very interesting. And I read it to make sure that I could, that would be something that I would suggest to other females. Mm -hmm. Deadly Force and Understanding Your Right to Self-Defense by Masada Ayub. Uh, Masada Ayub's a firearms instructor. Um, I know he was a police officer for a long time. He's been used as an expert witness and Mm -hmm. um, by hundreds of of self-defense cases and stuff like that is what he's been brought in for. Um, Incredibly smart guy. He's been in it forever. He's some like, I think he's a champion revolver shooter. He's a, he's an old dog, but you know, he, he knows a whole lot of tricks And, and it's really important. Not only, no, understanding your your right to self defense, but you know there's kind of three fights. There's the physical fight that you have mm-hmm. right at the time, and then after that you have that legal fight where you have to justify your actions before a court. Generally, unless it was just so, uh, unless it was called on camera and it was just so um, obvious, yes, yeah, so obvious that it was self defense that you know the officers don't even bother 
you know taking any time to, to charge or anything like that uh, most of the time you're going to have to go to court for it if nothing else i mean at least in the state of north carolina you can't be charged civilly for a shooting that you were in that you were found just for um so if you were in the right and you're shooting you can't be sued by the family after that mm-hmm. but you know in a lot of states it's not the case and understanding where you are the you know the legality there whether or not you can carry inside that state whether or not your concealed carries good inside that state um what the restrictions are for self-defense with a firearm inside that state that kind of thing it, it all i mean you're subject to the laws of the state at that point and um you know just kind of giving you kind of knowing what to do after the shooting is just as important knowing what to do during the shooting itself because you know the one of the worst things that could happen if you're in a justifiable shooting and then you end up in prison because you took the wrong steps afterwards yeah and uh you know while i, I genuinely believe that law enforcement Enforcement officers are good people. We do make mistakes. We have different different opinions about a lot of things, different different outlooks and, and stuff. We have some law enforcement officers, uh, not so much in the South, but we have a lot of law enforcement officers that aren't very pro gun. I mean, you know, that yeah. work in places, you know, uh, more liberal run states and, and things like that, more restrictive states. And then, you know, of course, we have uh, a lot of great police officers now that understand their the Constitution. But um, not every police officer is, you know, versed in constitutional law, at least not the way that they should be. And especially in dealing with the Second Amendment when it's been such a hot button issue lately. Another one I think is about Tim Larkin, uh, when violence is the answer. I think you I, again, I go back to, didn't you say that your son is reading that book, Gentry? He's listening to the audio book right okay. now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I enjoyed that one too. Yeah, that one is really good. And it goes back to the idea that, yeah, we're going to do our best at all times to avoid violence. You know, uh, we talk about a lot, you know, I don't, I don't want to fight. Um, I would prefer to avoid any kind of situation, uh, de-escalate a situation, diffuse that situation, whatever, and avoid the fight. But sometimes violence is the only answer you have. And when it is the answer, then, you know, it's, it's the only answer, really. Right. Uh, a good one, a book by Roy Miller, Meditations on Violence, a comparison of martial arts training and the real world violence. Essentially, it's just a comparison to make sure. Is that one that you just said? No, okay. but it was one I was about to say. Oh, okay. I was like, you I, well, made I a had, face, and I was like, I was sure that that's not what you just said. <laughs> no, I've actually got uh, a, a two others, and uh, go ahead. Just making sure. I mean, so many people do, I don't know, Taekwondo and Jeet Kune Do mm-hmm. and uh, Ninjutsu and, and all this other crap. Um whatever uh, uh force field training and whatever <laughs> it's just it has no basis in reality and it makes no sense and it makes you look dumb yeah. and you know if if we're doing all this so that we can look cool the only thing that looks cool is being competent and if you get beat up on the street you don't look cool look cool get better yeah you can read that book to make sure the training that you take you're taking is pertinent in the real world actually what i what i really laughed at was the fact that i was just about to say facing violence by also also by roy miller oh um yeah. So that's that's both of those are very good books. I've got both of them, read them both. They're awesome. They are both and it's facing violence, preparing for the unexpected. It is it is another one that is just really good. And a lot of the same things, honestly, as some of these others. So I think what would be a really, really good thing, because not I think we've just said, was that like eight, either eight or ten books we just kind of yeah, threw out there really back quick. And forth, yeah. I can't I lost count if we each did four or each did five, but I have no idea. <laughs> But I would like to say this. If you could say so one book, if somebody only has time to read one book, what do you think that would be? I just killed your whole you already had another one planned and everything, but I know we yeah. can't we can't do this forever. We're already recording for forty five minutes no. at this point in time. <laughs> one book. Honestly the the book that I think uh, that is covered the most like just just the most amount of of coverage and does it concisely and in a in a way that the average person like a layman can read it and understand mm-hmm. and not need you know understanding or googling uh is sentinel by pat mcnamara yeah i mean really really good one it's easily digestible it's not a very thick book i mean mm-hmm. you can get through it you can get them through the majority of it in a day or at least i did and i have dyslexia so it's like i read slow so you know i probably had to read half of the book twice because because <laughs> i, I you know, every, everything looks like numbers. You know, uh, as far as it goes, um, that's really, it's it's one of the books that I've been most impressed with. He also does a class Sentinel that you can take. A, it'll be on his website. I think it's like tmaxinc.com or something like that. Anyway, it's just to wrap up a plug because he's a good guy. You know, I've taken the class and stuff too, and the class is just as in-depth, you know, just as much usable information. Really very, very versatile of a book to make you a better protector. I was thinking about that, and it's funny because I was sitting there. I thought I had a good answer, but I'm slightly torn. <laughs> I think it would be somewhere between either the gift of fear or when violence is the answer. Mm -hmm. One of those two. 
especially of the ones that I, I just said, it'd be one of those two that I would probably say. Because I think both of those are, are excellent mm-hmm. yeah. in their own rights and for their own reasons. Probably if we are, I guess it, you know, if the person is asking, I would probably say the gift of fear. Yeah. Because, yeah, because of the intuition a, thing and yeah. everything else. Uh, people overuse the word powerful. Like yeah, like, it's powerful. Like, yeah, it's not really, that's not the correct word. But, you know, it, it is. It's, I mean, the... The skills that that book talks about, if you put them into practice, it is it's significantly powerful. It, yeah. it makes you, uh, it makes you safer. It makes you better. It, it, it's another one of those things like we were talking about. Like you know, if you end up in the fight, your tactics probably suck. You know, yeah, it's, true. It's true. the same thing. You know, if you can uh, can't do that, just one more book. If I can add, yeah, you're good. By, I think uh, we just Verbal did judo. four. So yeah. uh, I'll, I'll throw in one, one last one as well. Yeah, Verbal Judo by yeah. Doc Thompson. Yep, very good. Um, yeah, Doc Rhino is is. I mean, an incredibly intelligent guy. Um, he's a PhD that became a street cop. There's not a whole lot of those floating around. But you know, as far as it goes, um, you know, uh, just his his little tips on on being able to speak to people. It's stuff that I use all the time. Uh, being able to hijack a conversation and turn it around, uh, essentially put it back under control from you, and direct it where you need to go. And you know, escalation and de-escalation where you need it. I think that's that's one of the things that. Definitely, if if you're able to master talking to somebody, you'll definitely have much, much less worry about having to be a master of fighting somebody. Yeah, that's very, very true. Yeah. And I mean, we, we've talked about it a lot of times. I have used my words and everything to to stop situations many, many more times mm-hmm. exactly. uh, or many, many times. And I've not had to actually fight because I've always been successful in that. So that's kind of the goal that we're shooting for. I guess my the bonus book would be more toward kids. It's really recommended for ages 10 to 17, but I've, I've heard a lot of adults that have read it that have said they learned a lot from it as well. And that's after the bell rings, giving the kids the tools they need to stay safe. And it's really a lot about situational awareness, a lot of that kind of stuff, but it's Mm -hmm. on that level of, you know, middle to high school kids. Right. It's really good as well. If you guys are enjoying this podcast, go ahead and go go over to any podcast catcher, rate us, and please, please, please write us a review. That way we can read your review on the podcast. Yeah, and guys, don't forget the faithandfreedom.clothing shirts. Awesome shirts, and you can always use that coupon code Impact Defense for 10% off. They're Jesus' favorite shirts, probably. Yeah, probably are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. If I had to guess, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, we know that Jesus has a favorite chicken. That's true. Mm-hmm. There's, you know, it's Chick Fil A. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. See, I didn't even have to say who it was. You knew who yeah. it was. Oh yeah, I got one sitting upstairs waiting on me to come eat it right now. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Chick Fil A. Yeah, Jeremy brought me one. Holy crap! Why didn't you just say, "Hey, that Brian probably hasn't had lunch." You didn't see that meet up in the parking lot where he hands a Chick Fil A sandwich out of his window and. <laughs> I did see the meet up in the parking lot. Mm-hmm. We got a little worried as to who was over there, and then it's like, "Nah, this is probably Jeremy." Yep. I just figured that bag was too big, so I, just, I wasn't worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> just bringing me Jesus chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Steven's like, I, no, it's, "It's too. It's I don't know. Too early. Too late to to arrest anybody today." Oh yeah, definitely both. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so thank you very much, and we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.